Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Christ is risen. He is risen Amen. Thanks be to God. So good to see all of you this morning. If you have been here all of your life or you are here for the very first time, we are glad that you are here to celebrate this special Sunday with us. If you're a visitor, we invite you to sign our guest book in the back, or there are pew cards you can fill out and can to one of the ushers. We'd love to thank you for worshiping with us. One quick announcement. We weren't going to do announcements today, but just one quick reminder. Next week, we are continuing the Easter celebration with our Holy Humor Sunday. So I'm just reminding you to bring your church-friendly jokes with you. <laughs> so we'll have a little open mic time and we'll be sharing some jokes and having some fun. There'll be balloons, there'll be a baptism. It's going to be a wonderful Sunday. But let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship our God by listening to our prelude. Thank you, Judy, and welcome, welcome. Judy is our guest musician this morning, so we're glad you're here with us. <laughs> Alleluia, Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. May the peace of the risen Christ be with you, also with you. Please rise as able in mind, body or spirit. In spite of our doubts, may we reach out to touch the wounds of the world's pain, trusting that when grace and love surround them, they will become a part of Christ's resurrected body. And in spite of our doubts, may we live as though we are too. 
Our opening hymn is Jesus Christ is Risen Today, Red Hymnal 365 or on the screen. Please join me in our call to worship. What are you looking for? The light before the dawn. What are you looking for? A reason to hope. What are you looking for? Joy after grief and flowers after winter. What are you looking for? A place to belong. Who are you looking for? We are looking for the Messiah. Good news, come in. Love is alive. Surely God is in this place. You may be seated. Will you please pray with me? God of love and peace, we pray for our world. May your spirit guide our leaders and the leaders of every country in our world. How long, O oh Holy One, will we need to see violence and hate in our world? How long will we need to watch bombs destroy your beautiful creation, destroy innocent lives? When will we stop fighting against one another? When will your people no longer be divided? When will we live in peaceful harmony together as your beloved children? When will we learn? Jesus, we long to live in your peace. We long to feel your presence in all the world. Surround us with your love and help us to do our part to bring your peace to our world that so desperately needs it. Amen. As a teenager, my youngest brother used to yell down the stairs, Mom, where are my tennis shoes? My mother would lovingly holler back, 
have you checked your closet? <laughs> My brother would assure her that he did, and yet he still couldn't find them. Like clockwork, my mother would walk up the stairs, look in the closet, and find those tennis shoes. Like a parental magic trick. Sometimes, friends, our relationship with God can feel a little bit like that. We seek after God, we swear that we are looking, and yet we often miss. We often miss when the divine is present, right under our noses. So let us pray together, knowing that our seeking has its limits, but God's love does not. Let us pray the prayer of confession together. God of resurrection, we confess like a dog with a bone, we run aimlessly. We chase our tails looking for things that provide answers to the suffering of the world, looking for comfort to our longest nights. You meet us in the darkness before dawn, but we mistake you for the gardener. Forgive us for seeking after worldly things. Forgive us for forgetting to seek you. Speak to us, call us by name, that we might recognize you in our midst. With hope and gratitude we pray, amen. Family of faith, no matter how many times we lose sight of God, God never loses sight of us. We might spend our whole day seeking, but we are always found. So hear and believe the good news of the gospel, the good news proclaimed in resurrection. What once was lost is found. We are held in God's loving embrace, forgiven, claimed, and sent to serve. Alleluia. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. The gospel reading is from the book of John, chapter 20, verses 1 to 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. She saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her.
Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing this morning? Good. Thanks for coming up. So we heard the scripture reading, right? Did you pay attention a little bit to what they were saying? Okay. Jesus wasn't in the tomb, right? Where do you think Jesus was? When he wasn't in the tomb. That's a mystery, isn't it? Yeah. Where do you think Jesus is now? That's a hard one too, right? Right? Well, somebody asked a question about where God lives. And we know that Jesus is God too, right? So somebody asked the question of where does God live? So the author wrote a book answering her question. And it's called Where Does God Live? So I thought we should read it together today. Does that sound good? I'm going to, hopefully the mic will pick me up on the podium. The light's blocking me up. Okay. So here we go. So, where does God live? That's the title of the book. God lives in, as Paul said to mom and dad, God is all, God's all there and that's all we see. But I still don't see God, how can I see him? Do you feel like God's everywhere with you? I feel like that too. So let's pray together, okay? And repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for being with us always and everywhere we are. And all God's people say,
Will you please pray with me? Holy, loving God, we've spent the past six weeks asking questions. We've turned over every rock. We've shined a light in every dusty corner. We've opened the blinds. We have wrestled with truth. We have sought after you. So on this Easter morning, bring wisdom to our seeking. Move through this room until the walls echo with the sound of hallelujahs. Roll back the stones that might prevent us from drawing closer to you. Calm our hearts. Say our names. Awaken us to your presence in our midst. We are here. We are listening. We are seeking after you. Hallelujah. Amen. Christ is risen. Love wins. Thanks be to God. That is the good news for this morning. So I think I can just sit down. I think that's enough. <laughs> but I won't. <laughs> Honestly, that is all we probably need to hear this morning. It really is the gospel truth today. This morning is a culmination of our worship series, Seeking Honest Questions for Deeper Faith. We've been asking all sorts of questions with the theme from the good folks at A Sanctified Art. And I'd like to remind us of those questions this morning. Is this the fast I choose? Who will you listen to? How do we begin again? Will you give me a drink? Who sinned? Can these bones live? Where are you headed? As we looked at each of these questions, we explored them with many different stories where Jesus was experiencing and encountering people who were seeking. Nicodemus came to him in the veil of the night. A Samaritan woman at the well, he healed a blind man born without sight. And he rode into Jerusalem, bringing hope to all people. In our stories, each person or persons were seeking a new beginning, a different life, a deeper faith. What unfolded for them and us was an exploration, was assumptions that were disrupted, new perspectives might have been gained, and the mystery of our faith continues to grow. This Easter morning, we explore our last question. Who are you looking for? Who are you looking for? Mary comes to the tomb. She realizes that Jesus' body is not there. She runs. She gets the disciples. They, too, see the empty tomb, and then they run home. Angels appear in the tomb, and then she turns, and she sees Jesus. And Jesus asks her the same questions that the angels have just asked. Why are you weeping? And then he asks our question for today. Who are you looking for? The past couple of weeks, I've had this question in the back of my mind as I went through my ordinary day-to-day -day, and, let's face it, sometimes unusual day-to-day -day activities. Last week, I was here at the church office, and I was packing up, and I was getting ready to go do some hospital visits, and I heard, heard the doorbell ring. I was in a little bit of a hurry, you know, preparing for Holy Week and caring for our folks. And if I'm honest, if I'm honest with myself, I didn't want to be slowed down. 
The sound of the doorbell ringing brought with it a little bit of a fear of time lost. Yet I'm a firm believer that the best ministry happens in the distractions. So of course I went and I opened the door to see who it was and what they needed. It was a young man, a man that I didn't know, I didn't recognize, I had never met before. I opened the door slightly to see what he wanted, and he asked me if the church was closed. I could have easily said yes. I could have easily said yes, and that would have ended our conversation. Yet instead, I asked him what he needed, thinking in the back of my mind that he was probably here for some money, for some gas, or for some groceries. That's honestly what I was thinking in the back of my head. His response was, I would just like to come in and pray for a little bit. That's all I'm here for. I just want to pray. So I thought for a moment, this is Christ's church. This is Christ's church. It's not our church. When we are looking for the presence of Christ, this is where we come. How was I supposed to say no to someone that was seeking some time with God in prayer? So I let him in, and I showed him where the sanctuary was, gave him a Bible, and I went back into my office to make a few phone calls because, you know, no time wasted, right? Gave him some privacy. After a little while, I decided I would go in and check on him. So I came and I looked through the doors, and he was kneeling at the chancel railing, praying. Not wanting to disturb him, I went back to the office and made another phone call. After a little while later, I went in to check on him again. And this time he was seated in the pew over there with the Bible on his lap reading. So I came in and I said to him, would you like to share what brought you here today? Would you like to have a conversation? And he did. Now I won't share our conversation, but I will tell you that the whole entire time we were talking, all of the questions that we looked at in Lent were running through my head. All of those questions he too had. He had the same questions that we do. Then he asked me for some holy water. So I went and I got some water and we prayed over it. And he dipped his fingers in the cool water and he brushed his forehead and we prayed together. We spent a lot of time in prayer together. When thinking about this morning's question and the text for this morning, I couldn't get that encounter out of my head. Who are you looking for? Who are you looking for? This young man was looking for hope, was looking for grace, was looking for healing and a new beginning. My friends, he was looking for Christ. So I ask you this. What brought you here this morning? Did you come because a spouse or a parent coaxed you into it? Did you come because it's what you do every single Sunday morning out of habit or routine? Or did you come here seeking, seeking the risen Christ, seeking God? Mary went to the tomb seeking, yet she didn't recognize Jesus when he appeared right before her in front of the tomb. But then Jesus called her by name, Mary. Immediately, immediately she recognizes Jesus Christ. 
I wonder how many times we go about our day-to-day -day lives and we, like Mary, don't recognize the risen Christ right before us. How many times do we ignore the opportunities to be the doorway to Christ's love for others? Church is a place where we can indeed experience God and Christ and spirit, yet we cannot confine God to these walls. Just as Jesus was not in the tomb, Jesus is everywhere, everywhere, just like the book that I read to the children this morning. God is everywhere. Yet sometimes we don't recognize it or we're too busy to see all that God is doing in our midst. May you experience the living Christ who continues to show up in unexpected ways everywhere. May you be the hope for those who are seeking to know God's love. For the risen Christ goes with you on this Easter morning and beyond. Be the light. Be the love. Be a blessing. May it be so. Amen. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. You call your church to witness to your salvation. We give thanks for the theologians, preachers, and teachers who proclaim your gospel. Equip all the baptized to share the joy of the resurrection in all we say and do. Risen Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You bring abundant life throughout creation. The green blade rises and all creation greets the resurrection dawn. Preserve vineyards and orchards and those who tend to them. Feed us with the fruits of creation. Risen Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. You show your steadfast love without regard to borders, barriers, or human-made divisions. Infuse your justice in every nation of the world that all experience the peace that only you can give. Risen Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You show your steadfast love without regard to borders, barriers, or human-made divisions. Infuse your justice in every nation of the world that all experience the peace that only you can give. Risen Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You anointed your Son with the Holy Spirit and with power. Encourage us by his example in our ministries of healing, care, and outreach. We pray for all who are sick or hospitalized and for all health care workers who care for them. Risen Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen those who feel faint. Give courage to those who fear and bring wholeness to those in need, especially Maureen, Nancy, Gladys, Tim, Haley, Sue, Cindy, Connie, Barbara, Marlene, Stephen, Adam, James, Marlene, Kensick family, Barbara, Scott, Jesse, Betty, Deborah S., Doris, Debbie, Pat, Diane, Stacy, Leo, Gabe, Leroy, and Dolores, Steve. We pray for all, no, for those on the prayer chain we keep in our prayers and for those not mentioned in our hearts. We also pray for our weekly partner in ministry, Shepherd of the Hills in Egypt this week. Bless them as they continue serving Christ in the community and behind. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, who first taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Eternal one, we have come to enter into this Easter morning to find ourselves face to face with your good news. Thank you for giving us reason to hope. Thank you for the sunrise after a long night, for the healing of bones and hearts, for laughter that is contagious, and for the joy felt in community. Tether every gratitude and joy in our life back to you. Amen. So we remember on that night so long ago, that night of victory and success. Jesus sat around the table with 12 of his closest friends. They shared a simple meal. same way when the dinner was almost complete, Jesus took the cup, again blessed it and gave God thanks and shared it with his friends, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant poured out in my blood for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Every time you drink of this, remember Holy One, as we prepare to come to the table, just as Mary came to the tomb, we ask that in every stage of our seeking, you would be near us. Pour out a double portion of your spirit on this bread and cup, 
that we might see you as clearly as mirror did. And may this meal nourish us to build your kingdom here. Come, Holy Spirit. sunrises on mountaintops, in the laughter of children, and in meals shared together. We look for you on the city streets, in hospital rooms, in jail cells, in poetry and hem melodies. We look for you everywhere. Sometimes the seeking is hard, but then at other times we come to this table and all are fed, and all are welcome, and there is room for everyone, and no one is turned away or made to feel unworthy. And in those moments, we see you clearly. So thank you for meeting us in our seeking. Please don't ever stop seeking us. Gratefully, we pray. Amen. Will you join me in the affirmation of faith as printed in your bulletin or on the screen? We believe in resurrection, mysterious beyond our understanding, and yet like tulips after the snow, real. We believe in Easter morning in the promise of a God who would roll back every stone to return to us. We believe in Jesus, who calls us by name and asks, who are you looking for? So we look for justice, for mercy, for God in our midst. 
And as we look, we sing hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. Everything that we have, all of the many blessings, first came from God. And so now it is a time for us to give back some of those many blessings to God's ministry in our world. It is now time for our tithes and our offerings.
have comes from you, and so we give these tokens of our love and our faithfulness back to you. Bless our hands and our feet and our talents that they might be used for those that are seeking your love, seeking your presence, seeking your grace. We dedicate these offerings in the name 